Ladies and gentlemen, I finally got OBS in better quality. I followed the tutorial how to get better quality. It was under a user by AWOL Digital, so credit to him for the tutorial in order to get to get better quality on OBS. So from now on, no more blurriness. And this is a test video on Windows Millennium Edition on the Packer Bell PB570 on PCEM. Can you install Windows ME on the Packer Bell? I already formatted the disk, but the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the cabs. Cabs, so I'm gonna type Windows. Options. And cabs. Then I go to that path. And since this is Windows Millennium Edition, the CD drive, the cab files is Win9X. Because you may know Windows, Windows 95 has the cab files in Win95 and Windows 98 has it on Win98. So I'm going to go to here. We're going to copy E win 9 x star dot star and I'll be right back when this is done. Alright, the cab files are copied over. We're gonna eject the floppy and the Windows ME ISO and we're gonna reboot. It might take a while. Wait for the beep. Any day now. There we go. As you tell by the split second of the Windows 98 splash screen, I did make the format C drive bootable. To make this process quicker. So we're going to go to Windows, Options, Cabs, and I'm going to run Setup with the IS option to a disable scan disk because I don't want to feel like showing scan disk. And Windows cannot be installed on this computer because the processor is not at least 150 megahertz. Press OK to exit Setup. Well, I may need to bump up the processor, so I'll be right back. Apparently, Windows Millennium Edition requires a PC with a processor above 150 megahertz. So what I had to do is I had to bump up the Intel processor to 200. And I hope it'll work this time.
All right, take two. Windows, Options, Tabs, Setup, IS. I hope this works. And what do you know? It works! Because in order to install Windows Millennium Edition, you will need a processor that's above 150 megahertz. I'm going to click Next. I accept the agreement. This next part's a Pro key, which I'm going to skip because I don't want Microsoft to copyright me. All right, the prod key is entered off camera, and it wants us to install it cwindows.000, but we're going to change it to other directory, and we're gonna delete the zeros, including the period. And surprisingly enough, it doesn't give you a message on if you want the it to be that path just like on Windows 95 and Windows 98. Just checking for... So, what do you know? Windows ME does work on a Packard Bell PV570. The OS's you could install on this the PV570 is Windows 95, Windows 98, well you can also install Windows 2000 and Windows NT. But Windows NT will have an issue on the graphics card. You want ex all accessories, no to the address book, no to communications, I want all desktop themes, all multimedia, no online services, and let me see what system tools I want. I want character map, compressed folders, disk compression tool, uh, no. I'm enabling two of them. We're gonna name it when me test. I'm gonna change the computer description to Packard Bell. And I live in the Eastern Time. Let me find it real quick. There we go. So what do you know? You And we don't need to start this because it's pointless. And it's going to start copying files. And I'll be back on the next reboot. All right, the copying files is over. Now we're gonna reboot. And my BIOS 1992 American Megatrends Inc. Well, technically, this motherboard came out in 1995. The. The. Come on. Gotta wait for the thing to. Make its beep. There we go. Microsoft Windows ME Millennium Edition. Copyright 1981 to 2000 Microsoft Corporation. 
So it is possible you can run a 2000 operating system on a 1995 motherboard. And we're on the final portion of the Windows Millennium Edition setup, and we are done. Looking for hardware. I'm not sure how it's going to look for it, because this motherboard came out in 1995. Finding something. It's also finalizing some settings. Hopefully it can find the drivers because Windows ME is good at fi finding drivers on old MOBOs from the 1990s. If it's MMX. Hardware detection.
All right, it's all still looking for the hardware. Since the MOBO is from 95, I don't need to burn a PCEM Utilities ISO. Because I'm not sure when we're getting a release of PCEM that has USB support. And Windows ME does have USB support. Kind of like Windows 98 if you burn, if you make a Windows 98 utilities. Alright, so it also needs a reboot. We'll let it do that. Hang on. There we go. Alright. We're on the final part of setup of installing Windows Millennium Edition on the Packard Bell PB570. Oh, still is not found hardware. It's still looking for more hardware. Hopefully it picks up the, the video driver. Just finalizing some settings. Now setting up the following items. Control panel, programs on the start menu, Windows help, turning up the application start, and system configuration. Updating some system settings. And when it gets to the desktop, I'll turn off my microphone so that you can hear the Windows ME startup sound. Because as most of you know, Windows ME does have the same stuck sounds as Windows 2000. going a little slow because Windows ME was a controversial operating system for crashing a lot of times. I hope it does not happen on the Packard Bell PB570 from 1995.
Cab Extract. Huh. That's something I was not expecting. At least this is almost over. Three minutes. Come on. Two minutes. Till this is over. One minute. It's almost done. Less than a minute.
That means setup is almost done on the Packard Bell PB570 with Windows Millennium Edition. A controversial operating system that caused troublesome to some people. System setting. This progress bar is almost full. And oh, still going. But it's almost done. All right, final reboot, and we get to look at Windows Millennium Edition on the Packer Bell and the performance. Since setup is finished, here's the Windows ME boot screen. Oh! You don't have any drivers installed. But I'm going to mute my microphone if you want to hear the Windows ME sound. So I'm going to turn off my microphone if you want to hear the start sound. Turns out we didn't make it to a startup sound, but here we are on the desktop with absolutely no drivers installed. See, it's on a Pentium processor and... I do believe the drivers let me fix the drivers. If I do fix the drivers, I'll be right back. Well, it turns out that you can install Windows ME Millennium Edition, but the only issue is that you're going to have no drivers installed, unfortunately. So if you want it to 
come with the drivers, you'll have to do an upgrade from Windows 95 or Windows 98. So, I'm going to run CPU ID to show you the processor. I'm going to run it from here. And here it is. Intel Pentium MMX Overdrive P55C. As you can see, it's made on September 12, 1995. So, I'm probably going to do a follow-up to this where I upgrade from Windows 95. And I'll see you guys in the next video.